there are moments where I'm like not seeing a lot. It's not because I don't have much to see, but because I just also want to enjoy it. This car like really transcends the enjoyment. Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring and welcome to one of the most exciting videos, one of probably the most unique encounters and definitely one of the most unique cars that we have featured on this channel. Now before we're gonna go about all the ins and outs about this BMW 02 built and created by Nicholas, first the B-roll intro shots that you've seen before were actually shot with the theory behind this car. The classic meeting modern technology. In this case, what have we done, Adrian? This is the Helios 58 millimeters. It's a vintage lens with, as you can see, the, with the bunch of the adapters. If uh, it's from the M42 adapter to EF mount of the Canon, and from EF mount to E mount to the Sony, so to allow this lens, which is actually only here to allow this lens to work with the modern camera and in front we've got a bunch of the adapters to make it work with uh, CPL <laughs> lens, uh, CPL filter and ND filter. But this is basically a very old school Soviet Union lens yeah, you that you got from your grandpa you said. Yeah, you can uh, see here it made in USSR. Wow. So. Yeah, attached to a brand new Sony FX6 camera. <laughs> right, and now on to our main guests, main stars of today's show. Nicholas, thank you very much for, uh, first of all, creating such a car and also to, for taking your time to stopping by because yesterday we were just like randomly walking and then all of a sudden we hear this car passing and absolutely lost my mind. In case you missed yesterday's video, check it out. And yeah, so tell us more about it. Now, first of all, Misha, thank you very much for having us here at your premises, yeah, at your land, the Nürburgring. Um, so no. This is a BMW 2002 TE. Mm -hmm. uh, this idea was born when I was born. Yeah? <laughs> My whole life I have been crazy about cars and uh, more uh, especially for BMWs. So um, I was born in Colombia and when I was 20 years old, I came to Germany with my wife to work for BMW. Mm -hmm. And um, in the past years, since the introduction of the BMW i3 and i8, I played with the idea of making this drive more analog. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was the obvious choice, the 2002, my, my preferred car or my, my favorite car. So I started talking to people, talking to friends, developing the idea. And three years ago, we started buying this car, mm -hmm. a donor car, and uh, getting ideas on how to electrify it the right way. Um, right now, we have here a full homologated car with okay. e-homologation in Germany. Yeah, and th that was the, the main thing. When I saw this car first, I heard it yes. and like, it, it's electric. No, is it really electric? And then as you saw the actually license plate E, yeah, yeah. it is fully officially legally German TÜFT. Electric. Yeah, that was the, that was the difficult thing um, for us to get a TÜV uh, co um, concessionary that was uh, willing to work with us in order to get this car homologated. He mm -hmm. was involved since the beginning in the developing of the car, 
because we wanted to make it as original as possible and as uh, um, usable as possible um, as, is, as it gets. Yeah, so let's talk about, well, the drivetrain probably, because that's probably what everyone wants to know. Yes. What's underneath it? Okay, so underneath it is a Tesla front driving unit drivetrain. Mm -hmm. In this case, with 120 kilowatts. On the rear axle. That exactly. That's <laughs> the typical BMW driving feeling. It's built on the rear axle. Mm -hmm. And it is attached to BMW i3 batteries with fast charging system. Can we see them? Yes, like, of course. Yeah. Some part of the batteries are here on the back. This helps with traction. Mm -hmm. And it's also needed because on the front we don't have that many, that much space for the batteries. And the rest of the batteries is here on the front. Nice about from that side, so we have a nice sun. In total we have 33 kilowatt uh, hours mm -hmm. of capacity. Nice. So that's the inverter, I guess, or? No, the is inverter the? is on the back, but ah, okay. this is the charger. Okay. This is the charger for 22 kilowatt hours, but we also have CCS direct charging up to 50 kilowatts on mm. this, uh, in this case. Yeah, that definitely sounds louder than this car later ah, yes, on. Yes, a little bit, but it's <laughs> like the grandson of this car, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. When you said, by the way, the batteries are on the, on the rear to give you traction to the rear axle, it reminded me of the M635. Mm -hmm. the first production M car yes. where they put the battery on in, in the trunk yes. to actually for the weight distribution. So yes. yeah, it's, it has like the, the real BMW feeling of the past. So the Tesla motor on the rear, 120 kilowatts, which is roughly 180 horsepower-ish. Mm -hmm. yes. I think it's uh, pretty much the same what the O2 Turbo had. Exactly. Uh, on that time, the most powerful 2002 that BMW delivered was uh, the BMW 2002 Turbo. It had 170 horsepower. So that was uh, our uh, benchmark mm -hmm. when we created this system. We will be able to match also the cars that Alpina produced with 240 ki um, horsepower. Okay. Uh, but the, that uh, will be on the next, uh, uh, next model. Yeah, yeah. Because he told me that actually the power output right now is limited by two by the braking force that the car can provide. That's it. So, so we have stock brakes, stock well stock from this particular car. Yes. This means we should definitely take it easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> brake pads and brake fluid, how are they? <laughs> they are really good. Yesterday we were testing some laps here in the Nurburgring. <laughs> okay. So I was checking everything in order to, to get it good. right. That's good. That's a very important point. Yeah. That's regarding the drivetrain. Um, did we mention where the batteries come from? From which car? Or the batteries come from the BMW i3. Okay. So we it's we try to use as many BMW components as, as possible in order to be like uh, original. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we used from Tesla is the motor because of the height okay. of the motor. We don't have that much space, so we are very limited. And the Tesla motor is the most. Uh, the most uh, capable for that. Okay, so let's have a quick look on the interior before we proceed with the lap. Oh, so the first thing that we're missing is of course the, uh, the gear lever. Yes. <laughs> the, the shifter. So on this car, we missed the gear shifter. Mm -hmm. We have a more modern gear selector or okay. driving selector. Um, this is the, our prototype, so this is going to also be developed to have that 70s feeling. Mm -hmm. We are trying to use as much analog as possible. So if you can close up here to the dials, those are the original dials of the 2002, but behind the dials is everything electronic. Okay. So we can show the battery level, the temperature for motor and for the battery system. Mm -hmm also the percentage of use of the moment uh, or actual usage of the power of the car yeah including a negative dial to show the recuperation oh, yeah, wow. yes the regeneration wow also the charging that means when you connect this car to the wall or to the charging station 
you will see how fast it is charging. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, what is the range? The range uh, is to 200 kilometers. Okay. Um, depending on how you drive, as always. Of course. We uh, drove this car. We drove it since October, nine thousand one hundred twenty-three kilometers mm -hmm. in the Alps and on, uh, in Italy. Uh, we went also to France in all temperatures. We were driving by minus 15 degrees, also charging. So in winter, when the batteries are very cold, you get like 150. Mm -hmm. But in, under normal conditions, 200 kilometers. Okay, nice. And what's the idea behind this car? Is it just for yourself or can people order one from you? Or what's the plan? Uh, Misha, the people can order one from me. Please do that. <laughs> yeah, because we have... What we want, what we are uh, trying to do with this car, what we expect is to maintain these cars alive. These are legends that deserve to be driven and to live. So um, right now we are in this time where uh, the, the, uh, the petrol cars are disappearing, the ICE uh, engines are getting very small uh, or are disappearing also. So um, in 20, 30 uh, years, I want these cars to be able to be on the street being driven for our kids or the next generations to be able to to drive them yeah mm -hmm. they deserve to know the history of the car because i i, I grew with that and i am very passionate about that i i hope that the the future generations can also enjoy that yeah i that's a very positive outlook and a very positive note to end this fragment this section of this video because i think it's time to go for a lap and see how it actually performs on let's the track. do it especially to celebrate 50 years of bmw m motorsport oh yes and also 50 years of the electric car 50 Isn't years it? of this yeah nice <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> we're gonna take it easy with the stock brakes and also oh we didn't talk about the the, the tires and wheels let's do and let's show that because that's actually a very very important segment so it's quite special so it was very difficult for us to to get this project done because um, I want to make it as original as possible as the car was in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So through a, one of my best friends here in Germany, we were able to contact BBS and get the original BBS F30 uh, rims wow. directly from from the new factory. Wow! And also the Michelin tires with the 70s um, design yeah those are semi slicks are racing tires <laughs> but uh, homologated for the street nice that's really special okay let's put them I'm not say to a test because we're definitely not going to push with this one-off prototype uh, but uh, let's i'm excited let's go <laughs> let's do it okay so old school seat belts yes oh this <laughs> Nice. Ah, that will work. I guess that's my main concern is actually. <laughs> yeah, no, but we will not be that fast. It no. drives maximal 160. That's fast enough for such a car. Yeah. On the ring for sure. Okay. No. I fear the car. Ah, you want to have one? Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Okay, wow. so. Oh, how do invited. <laughs> it's analog. Did you start it like an old car? Okay. Until you hear click, click. Perfect. That's, That's it. it. Now you the, brake and then yeah. you put it on the on the. All right. The handbrake. Hand Instant torque. Yeah. Put it on oh, we definitely have some old school uh, feeling because we have no power steering. Or mm -hmm. nice, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Electric car with no power steering. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Right now it is showing you that the battery is not uh, warm enough, but the, if you drive one minute full, then okay. it will get warm until we are there. Nice. <laughs> wow, this, you know, it just doesn't click in my brain mm -hmm. because so many senses are like an old car. The, 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 the compactness, obviously the interior, that it's small, the, also the way it drives, the certain driving dynamics. Yeah. But you have instant torque and response and like already the, the electric motors and oh, it's actually it's it has quite decent engine braking. Mm. Like when you uh, go off the accelerator, it actually yeah. uh, doesn't let it itself roll. It's I'm glad you like it. Yeah, it's... 
I think it will appeal to yeah, kind of to, to everyone in, mm. in the sense of of course someone's gonna say like oh my god why did you destroy such a good car of course they, it polarizes <laughs> yes but once you have driven it and you see that it's still analog mm -hmm. then you you understand what the concept is yeah and that's the main thing that you have this analog old school feeling mm -hmm. while of course having the the advantage of a drive share. i mean at the end of the day if people are gonna complain they have to realize that ever since the beginning of times people were sw swapping drivetrains yes like you put the last swap in this the last swap mm. in that put the turbo on this or that but the brakes are also quite old school feeling ish uh, the blinker is on this side ah it's really old school ah okay nice <laughs> that's good to know especially on track if yeah. we, we need, need to let someone pass Ooh, exciting 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 <laughs> Your door is not really closed, closed. So, uh -huh. so you have to open, do open it like... Is, where really is the opening? Here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. okay. That, like that. That's Good. now. And then we have, of course, the old school. All right. Off we go. Marshals are like, what the hell is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Exciting, 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 exciting. <laughs> wow, that's like really. And I don't know if I want to floor it or just enjoy it, you know, because at this point I'm just already having so much fun just by driving it normally. But of course, I want to see the acceleration, so. Off we go! Whee! <laughs> nice! All right, we're doing already over 100 kilometers per hour. That's what the old 2000 or 02 wouldn't be able to do, probably. Yes. So what are the average 0 to 60 or 0 to 100 times? We haven't uh, clocked it, uh, but we calculated like six seconds. Okay. That's comfortable. That's nice. When you brake, it goes a little bit to the right. Uh, not too but much. Went, yeah, That's but good. Just that you know. But you have experience, so yeah. I'm not worried. <laughs> So it has no ABS, I assume? No ABS, no traction control. Proper old school. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and once you get the semi-slicks warmed up, so you can push it a little bit harder. Yeah, that's nice. There's a bit of body roll, but it's because you're using like an old chassis, of course, that yes. just wants to move everywhere. But there's like suspension components and obviously relatively low central point of gravity. Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's a mixture of combination of like an old school technology and a new one. Yeah. <laughs> That's really fun. That's the idea. So this car we are using KW suspension V3. Okay. Specially developed for this car. Nice. <laughs> I'm just enjoying it. Like. <laughs> It's, it's really like this, this, the steering is, like I said, it's a combination of still being alive because you have no power steering. So it's like really this classical feel, yet direct, but then you have this combination of body roll, yeah. which is like, okay, it's an old school car. It's again, yeah, nothing is clicking in my mind. Like, <laughs> that's really fun. That's roughly the, the maximum speed. Yeah, that's, well. this car is limited to 160 due to the brakes. Okay, yeah. The cars that we built with the, with the larger rotors are going to be able to drive much faster. Okay, but you don't need much more than that. You don't want to be traveling no. faster. So. Actually, even the X-Ray is pretty much flat. <laughs> Let me start braking a lot more in time. <laughs> and off we go again. It's such a nice cruiser, right? I mean, you can cruise here, but yeah, I imagine myself actually use this to just like, go through mountain roads and sleep. And that's like... the idea. You will love this car when you are in the Alps or you're just yeah. uh, driving around here in the Nürburgring uh, area. It's 
lovely. And you will stand out. Yes. <laughs> Suspension is really nice. I don't see myself doing that with the original O2. And the brakes are as well. I'm happy that you didn't over-exaggerate that the brakes are fine, because they actually do perform very well. <laughs> and off we go again. We'll have time to enjoy the view. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it is slow. It's definitely not slow. No, it's perfect. Yeah, no. Because it's, I mean, yeah. like you said, that the components need to be, uh, need to work. And, uh, and yeah. that's the thing, the, the, the biggest downside when you have all kinds of tuners try to build like a faster car, mm -hmm. it's, they just put lots of horsepower and it doesn't work. And I think in, in this case, like, it would have been like, you know, very difficult probably to find the optimal balance, mm -hmm. what you managed to achieve, because you do have, again, this feeling of analog while the drivability of a modern car, and especially for in the future, like you said, the indicator for a faster GTR, please go past, you can go, off we go. Because like you said, the idea of this is that people will be able to enjoy these cars in many, many years. Yeah. And because at the end of the day, why people love the old school classic cars is because of the advantages that they give you, by advantages, by the emotional feelings. Yes. The, the memories that they give us. Yeah. It's not that you want to have the old school car because you enjoy spending like 30 minutes in the cold outside in the winter trying to fire it up and because your door handle is frozen. Yes. No, it's because of the type of emotion that it gives you when you're driving it. And this is exactly what this car gives you while giving you still the today's advantages of the drivetrain and also you have like the green stickers which means you can go to the like the city into the city mm -hmm. uh, because all the old school cars are getting banned because of the internal combustion engine yeah. car so i assume you can go with this car in like some strict areas like somewhere in like france and paris yes. or like even munich probably as well something that you're not able to do with a regular classic yes you're absolutely right and the reaction that 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 I want to generate with this car is exactly that, that you go in, it's analog, and you just can enjoy it. Yeah. You no, know, it doesn't need to be so, uh, overpowered or uh, exaggerated in some uh, ways. Just the spirit of the car being kept alive with a new drivetrain. Yeah. And uh, I think you nailed it, definitely. And, uh, like Thank you. No, it like, means a lot coming from you. Yeah, no, uh, like I said, I, I didn't know what to expect from this, you know? Because being a, a prototype in the first place or something that is just uh, built and trying to combine modern, and there are so many areas where it can go wrong, you know? Yeah. But I think if, if this is what you wanted to transcend, then you nailed it. Because of course someone can say like, oh, well, but with modern electric car, it can, it can be a lot faster. Yeah, yeah. But that's not the point. No, no, no. It's not the point of this car, to be fast. It's the enjoyment of the drive. Exactly. And like from start to finish, I'm driving with a huge smile and this is something you cannot fake. And that's amazing. You can even do mood curve a flat, but maybe on a second lap at some point. <laughs> not gonna risk it, but it's, it's so much fun. Like really. Yes, we're overtaking someone. <laughs> but it's pretty much an empty track today anyway. Yes. No, and uh, you have to be you have to be real to yourself. Of this course. car has 180 horsepower and here in the Nürburgring it, it, it doesn't matter which car you take. Mm -hmm. There is always going to be someone, someone faster with which who is faster, who has a more powerful car. So so you don't have to be concerned about that. Yeah. Very nice. So what are the general reactions that people give you with this car? It's polarizing, but uh, more on the positive side. Uh -huh. The people, um, young people cannot uh, order it in some categories. So they start asking how this happened, which brand it is. We didn't, we, we didn't knew such a car existed, so I start uh, telling them the story of the BMW 2002, 70s, 60s, and they, they, they start to understand, um, and they like it because it's 
different. It's not a mainstream product. Mm -hmm. And we also have the purist who think um, I am crazy and I am like the demon. <laughs> yeah, of um, course. They are very extremist people uh, regarding originality on a car. Mm -hmm. For me, originality is when you keep the soul, the soul alive. Yeah, the spirit of the car, and that's what I want to preserve. Yeah. But for them, is each. Um, Component, each component, each bolt, needs, each bolt to be, needs to be exactly the same in the same color and on the same torque. Uh, put it uh, so. It's uh, but luckily, the positive ones, the positive reactions are more than the than the extremist negative ones. What I actually noticed is that I'm, I'm not moving the steering wheel a lot. No, it's was that direct. was that an old car as well? Because I never driven the O2. That's the magic of the O2. There yeah, is an really? even more sportier um, a steering rack, steering rack, uh, which was used for racing purposes and for the Alpina cars. Yeah, because that's unusual for a classic car. Usually yeah. it's like a bus, no. like even 635, which was yes, like what yes. 10, 15 years later, and you used was like the first M car. Yeah, it was completely uh, different story. So and I'm that's surprised. the magic of the 2002. That's why you could take this car on Sunday to the racetrack mm -hmm. and on Monday bring your kids to school with you yeah. or go yeah. to the office. You didn't have to modify a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. There are moments where I'm like not seeing a lot. It's not because I don't have much to say, but because I just also want to enjoy it. This car like really transcends the enjoyment. You know, with... And that's the big thing, I think the reason why many petrol heads... Petrol heads, not yeah. car guys, hate on electric cars is because, honestly, yes, the first electric cars were vacuum cleaners. And even nowadays, it's quite hard to transcend the emotion. From them and this is why a lot of car guys or petrol heads actually hate electric cars because they're afraid that driving car will become like something just getting from A to B but yep. for real car guys getting driving a car is not just getting from A to B it's about enjoying the dynamics the emotion that the car provides and yeah of course the electric cars are lacking it and for many of them is of course the future becomes scary because you don't want to give up, give up what, you, what you have. But I think with this, the future is not that scary. That's the idea, that the future becomes something that you can drive also analog, that you can have this driving feeling, this... Uh, what BMW wants to, to transmit, the Freude and Fahren. Mm -hmm. yeah? They enjoy driving pleasure. So this is, this is what, what the people can expect of this car. Yeah. No, it's it's amazing. Honestly, right now I would I wouldn't mind either a going for a second lap or just going to like uh, nearby roads and just enjoy the the car. It's it's really great. Like like I said, there's no way you can fake the, the smile on my face. I can talk about the driving dynamics, about this that, but at the end of the day, it's about the smile on your face that you get from driving any car, and this one makes it possible. Like so, I'm excited to see you. Uh, more powerful version in this case. Amisha, as well. <laughs> I will take it here as soon as we have it ready. <laughs> but to be honest, I'm actually um, no, uh, I'm actually don't, wouldn't even care about the more powerful version because this already is a lot and lots of fun, and this is amazing. And um, yeah, so maybe next time I'll, I'll borrow it from you to, to go for a weekend somewhere away. Of course, anytime <laughs> when you are near Munich. Awesome. Well, you just tell me, and then we will reserve a driving pleasure weekend. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely have. It was the most random and the best encounter, one of the best encounters I had. I'm very happy that we could make it happen. And yeah, it's something that, like I said, you should not be afraid of the future and you should definitely check what Nicholas can do and, and give him a follow because uh, I'm excited to future products because from a car bike guy perspective there is marketing and there is actually emotional attached to engineering something you cannot fake through marketing and this is something you should experience and yeah it's the best thing I'm 
I'm really like I'm happy I had this experience myself. So thank you very much. Thank you, Misha, for this uh, for this encounter. Yeah, it's really I'm really glad that 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 it happened. Also, that spontaneous. And thank you, people, for watching and yeah. for you to to getting us this platform. And yes, please follow us and support us <laughs> to to get the future done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To, for a happy future. Yeah, absolutely.